Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Rowell, and today I'm here to talk to you about how to improve your immune system through digestion. Now, before I tell you a little bit about myself, I guess I first want to ask a couple of questions, which is how many of you could say that you actually understand how your digestive system works? Probably not very many, I'm guessing. Now, how many of you could say that you actually understand how your immune system works? Probably even less of you who understand that, right? Well, I understand where you're coming from because up until I went back to school to become a functional nutritional therapy practitioner, I knew very little bit, I knew very little about these really important systems in our bodies. And of course, given our current state of the world, there is no better time to really understand how your immune system works and how it's related to your digestion. Digesting food is something that we do every day, nearly every day, depending on how often you fast. So I thought this was a timely topic. I'm excited to share this information with you. And so let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to cover I'll tell you a little bit about this and then I'll tell you more about myself so you understand why this topic is so meaningful to me. We're going to go through how your digestive system works. We're going to go through how your immune system works. We're also going to then cover how they relate to each other for optimal health and how ensuring that you're optimizing your digestion also ensures that you're optimizing your immune system. And then I'm going to share with you takeaways that you can do now to help you improve your digestion strengthen your immune system, lose weight, look better, and feel better, okay? Okay, so let me just show you a little bit about me. I'm a professional bodybuilder. I'm in the natural division, and also, like I mentioned, a functional nutritional therapy practitioner who started my own business. I got into this after being a trial lawyer for 17 years, and I got into this because I'm passionate about it because I really like fitness, and most people would say, Okay, she's a professional bodybuilder, she's pretty fit. But let me show you another side of me that happened to me just last fall so you can understand why this digestion topic is so important to me, okay? These are all photos of me taken in the last couple of years through my bodybuilding. This is a photo I took of myself at 10 o'clock at night, one night in October, and no, I'm not pregnant. That is my digestive system after a series of events that caused me to create a tremendous amount of digestive distress in my body. If you guys can't tell that that looks abnormal, <laughs> I mean, it looks like I'm eight or nine months pregnant and I am not. In fact, I took that photo at about 10 o'clock at night. I had fasted all day. I had one meal around eight o'clock PM. And this is what happened to me after eating a nutritious, nutrient dense meal full of healthy proteins and healthy fats. This was the side view. And then the next photo I'll show you is the photo I took of myself the next morning at nine o'clock AM. Still a very distended belly. And you can see that my abs are starting to come back a little bit, but that's the sign of major digestive distress. The short version, by the way, on how I got here is that it was a combination of experiencing um, a couple of colonics procedures that I did for the first time and contracting a parasite when I was traveling out of the country. So my digestive system needed major help. So in addition to learning about the digestive system in school, I also had to dig really deep to figure out how do I fix this? And really, how does this work? So here's a photo of the digestive system just to give you an image of it. Our digestive system does not just include our stomach. It is all of the organs and components beginning with our salivary glands all the way down to how we excrete food out of our bodies. Some would argue that our digestion starts as early as our brain. And I, let me just explain that for a moment. What we used to do decades ago, hundreds of years ago, and what I think people are starting to do more of finally during quarantine is cook and prepare our own meals. Now, when we cook and prepare our own meals, 
it is really good for our digestive system. And that's for a couple of different reasons. The first is that our brain is actually preparing our body for the process that it's just, that it's going to soon start, which is eating, okay? That's when digestion starts, but it really starts when our brain starts to recognize that we're about to do it. So our brain triggers enzymes in our salivary glands to start breaking down our food. So salivary glands start to produce enzymes. They're there to help us break down the food. The food then goes through our esophagus into our stomach and all of these different organs are involved. But imagine now in our modern society when many people are eating, going through the Starbucks drive through some other fast food drive through something else where their brain isn't getting prepared for the physical idea that they're about to eat, our digestion will get off track the get-go. Our brain won't realize we're about to ingest food and it won't have time to produce the necessary salivary enzymes to help our digestive system work. So just on this slide, you guys, I want you to hear one takeaway message, which is really start to prepare your brain for food. And one kind of hack or tip on that that some people do is before they're about to eat, they will switch about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in their mouth to um, start those salivary enzymes. That's one thing that you can do. <clears throat> so, oops. This is what happens when the digestive system doesn't work, right? So what I wanted to do is figure out what it is. What digestion really is, is we are mechanically and chemically breaking down our food, okay? Chemical starts with those salivary enzymes that I just mentioned, and the mechanical breakdown of our food is actually the chewing. So what's really important and what many people I see don't do, me included, I was always guilty of this, is we wolf down our food in three or four bites because we're in a hurry. We have to get back to a meeting. A kid is screaming at us. We're driving in our car. We're, we're consuming food in all of the wrong settings, you guys. In order for our digestive system to work, we have to both mechanically and chemically break down our food properly. And by the way, we should be chewing every time we put food in our mouth 25 to 30 times before we swallow those morsels. So let me identify for you three keys to digestion that are takeaways that I hope will be helpful to you. As we just mentioned, digestion is the mechanical, using your mouth and your motor function to break down the food into small molecules, and chemical, getting those enzymes, and then once it hits the stomach, stomach acid and other properties to help break down the food. Digestion is a north to south process. If you don't get your brain prepared to provide the enzymes, and do the actual chewing before you swallow, you're going to set your digestive system off right from the start. So really be gentle with yourself when you're eating meals. Three primary organs that are involved, and I'm just gonna show you that slide again, um, in our digestive process are stomach, pancreas, and gallbladder. And I've put the intestines I in parentheses because the intestines are also a very important component of our digestive system. The other thing I think that I'd mention here, which is also a key to digestion that I haven't identified, is that not only is it a north to south process, but digestion also must happen in a parasympathetic state. So I don't know about you guys, but I can tell you, especially when I was trial lawyering, the number of times I'm embarrassed to admit that I ate while multitasking on a conference call, in a meeting, walking down my office hall, driving in between meetings. I mean, these are horrible behaviors to engage in if you want to optimize your digestive system, okay? So don't do as I do, do as I say, which I think is the opposite of the saying. <laughs> So again, the stomach, that center organ, obviously here, is one of the key organs, our pancreas and our liver. And I really like this particular image because you can almost see how all these come together where the pancreas secretes insulin or glucagon, depending on the state that it's in. And you can see our gallbladder here comes in. That's a very small organ. 
but it comes in here to inject bile to help break down the food that's coming from the stomach before it goes into our large intestine or our colon. One fun fact here, guys, which I learned, and I thought this was so cool. This is our small intestine, which you'll hear me talk about today because I'm very, very passionate about people understanding how important this is to the health of our digestive system and immune systems. This thing, when all stretched out, is between 20 and 25 feet long. The width of it is about the width of our middle finger, but it's 20 to 25 feet in length. And then our large intestine is only about five feet. So what is the digestive system doing for us? Well, it's breaking down all of the nutrient-dense foods that we're eating. So in order for us to actually absorb the essential fatty acids that are coming from all those great healthy fats that we're eating as low-carb ketogenic practitioners, or the proteins that we're eating from, or the amino acids that we're getting and the proteins that we're eating, and even the fibers and other ingredients that we're eating from healthy carbs, the body has to be able to absorb the nutrients out of these. These are macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So what we really want the digestive system to do, and what it does effectively, is to absorb these nutrients. Our digestive system is also absorbing tons of micronutrients, okay? And this is why it's so important to start our digestive system off correctly in our brain. Think of the primary micronutrients, vitamins. Those are your vitamins B, D, C. We also have all sorts of minerals that the digestive system is absorbing. And we have our macro minerals, our micro minerals. Think about our macro minerals, which are calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium, and our microminerals, which is our iron, chromium, manganese, selenium, and zinc. There are others. But if you stop and just think about this for a moment, you guys, our immune system functions best and most optimal with a healthy body. Doesn't it make sense in some ways how our digestive system has to be able to work to absorb the nutrients to feed our immune system so that it can protect us from any sort of pathogen that comes our way. Here's another image of the digestive system because I just wanna show, going back to the fact that this is the mechanical and chemical breakdown of food. You can see here we ingest food and this is the propulsion for swallowing, this peristalsis. This is a mechanical action and we have mechanical digestion, the chewing with our mouth, churning with our stomach and the segmentation that happens all along that 20 foot small intestine. There's a lot going on at work here. Look at the absorption that's happening at that point. It's taking the nutrients from our food, the water from our food, and it's bringing those substances to our blood vessels, our lymph vessels, and then it's bringing things into our small intestine. The chemical digestion that's happening here along with the mechanical is just fascinating. It's a very complex process. And again, it starts with the state that we are in when we're eating and how well we are starting the process in our mouth and our brain. So if I haven't been clear, we need an optimally functioning digestive system to absorb the nutrients from our foods in order to feed our cells. You guys remember basic biology that we all learned when we were younger. Cells make up tissues, Tissues make up organs, organs make up systems, and systems make up our body. So our digestive system and our immune system start out with cells. And the cells that we have in our bodies are healthy or not healthy, depending on the nutrients that they are absorbing from our food. And to further underscore how the digestive system relates to what we'll get into now, which is our immune system, Science has now revealed that over 70 to 80% of our immune system is created in our gut. So our immune system is dependent upon the health of our gut. Unhealthy gut, leaky gut, means weakened immune system. We need to get our digestive systems in order to make sure our immune system functions as it should. So let's talk about the immune system. Before you get overwhelmed by this slide, because I will tell you, the immune system is such a complex and intricate system that it can be really overwhelming. So I don't want to get too wrapped up in a lot of the scientific terms. 
I'm going to use some of them as I describe how the system works to you, but I am more interested in you guys understanding kind of the key players. So our immune system, obviously we all know, is designed to protect us from outside enemies. And by the way, it's the outside enemies that get in and sometimes it's inside enemies that we've intentionally let in. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in a second. You can think of the enemy, which, I've, which it states here, also as the pathogen, which could present in the form of a bacteria. So you ate undercooked meat, you ate sushi, you ate something that was moldy, something that has bacteria on it, that's a pathogen entering your system. Another pathogen could be a virus. Remember, a bacteria and a virus are two different things. And the way that your immune system responds is slightly different. So we're going to talk about that. There's also virally infected host cells. But here's the other thing that I really want you guys to hear and see. Okay. A pathogen could be in this category. You didn't get a bacteria. You didn't get a virus. But you have what is a foreign protein, carbohydrate, or fat. Now, what does that mean? Well, could mean a couple different things. One is you could be eating a quote unquote foreign carbohydrate by consuming gluten. Most bodies don't like gluten. There are some people that can tolerate it better, most don't. So your body would recognize that as a foreign carbohydrate, as a pathogen, as an enemy, and your immune system would go to work to start repairing itself from the damage that you did because you consumed gluten. For some people, it may be dairy. I know I have a major sensitivity to dairy, so when I consume too much dairy, I notice that it wreaks havoc on my system and I don't feel as well. That's because my body is recognizing it as a pathogen. For lipids, okay, these of course are fats, it could be a rancid fat. It could be something that went bad. Your protein could be something that went bad. But perhaps more important than everything I just mentioned, you guys, is the fact that a foreign, foreign protein, carbohydrate, or fat could simply be a piece of any of those macronutrients that is not well digested. Yes, you could have caused an enemy attack on your body by chewing only three bites and swallowing a whole piece of meat that your body didn't have the appropriate ability at that time for whatever reason to really break down. Maybe you had been stressed and not slept well, so you have less hydrochloric acid in your stomach. And so now you can't break down the protein as well. So you've got this big chunk of protein. Maybe you're developing an allergy to something that you didn't know before, but this could be a, a undigested piece of food that is still in your system floating around that your body recognizes as an enemy, okay? So if you've ever gone to the bathroom and you have seen undigested food in your stool, that is a problem. I know all of us have experienced that from time to time and it means you have some level of dysfunction in your digestive system that should be addressed, okay? So I'll talk a little bit about neutrophils I'll talk a little bit about macrophages, and I'll talk a little bit about T cells and B cells on the next slides to break this down, but it's really important to understand that these are the kinds of players and how they can affect the immune system, which as I, I'm sure you can understand now, is highly, highly, highly connected to our digestion. Okay, so the two questions your immune system is always wanting to know, two things it wants to, it's asking all the time as it's operating in your body, and those questions are, are you me? Meaning, are you me? Are you part of me? Are you supposed to be here? And if you're not, are you safe? Your immune system's job is to protect you and keep you safe. So when it identifies something inside of it that it doesn't recognize because it's foreign by definition of your immune system, it's going to go to work to attack it. So it's going to ask, are you me and are you safe? Now, there are three subsystems in the immune system. And I'm not, not going to spend too much time delving into this, but it's important for one reason that you'll see in a second. Part of your immune system is your integumentary system. That was a word I had to practice saying. And that is comprised of things like your skin, hair, nails, glands, and nerves. Another subsystem in your immune system is your lymphatic system. 
So that transports your lymph and that, that acronym here that I have for WBD is your white blood cells in your body. So that's what our lymphatic system is doing. And then thirdly, one of the subsystems of the immune systems, which is relevant to our discussion today, is your digestive system. It is part of your immune system, which is why I believe it's so important for all of us to get this under control. So we have three lines of immune system defense. And this is sort of the meat of what I'm going to talk about with respect to your immune system today. The first line of defense, which most people think about as kind of basic, is your physical and natural barriers. And I'll show you a slide that identifies those, but you know, you can think of those things as mucous membranes, your skin, things that when you sneeze, when you're coughing, your body's trying to get pathogens out of it all the time, okay? That's your first line of defense. If your first line of defense is not successful in fending off the invader, then the next line of defense that's going to come into play is called your innate immunity. That's a very complex system of defense that usually can attack most invaders. But if both of those systems are overwhelmed, if the pathogen is too much or too strong, or if your first and second barriers are weak because your lifestyle has caused that by having poor digestion, you're eating too much processed food, you're drinking too much alcohol, you're not sleeping, you're working too much, hello, you're living in America, right? If you are having a weakened physical and natural barrier and innate immunity, then the third line of defense that has to come down the fact is adaptive immunity. So let's talk about physical and natural barriers first. And no, when I say physical barriers, I don't mean something like this maze that this man is standing in front of. I'm talking about physical barriers actually on your person, which would be things like your skin, your mucous membranes, tears, earwax, mucus coming out of your nose, stomach acid, and even urine that it's excreted through, okay? So those are physical barriers. Some scientists will say that physical barriers are part of innate immunity, which we're gonna talk about next, <clears throat> but a lot of others identify your physical barriers as a total separate category. If you have strong physical barriers, if you have tight skin, if you have, um, you don't, you have really good stomach acid because you're eating a really nutrient dense whole foods diet. Those kinds of things can usually keep out any pathogen, which is why we think of them in a different category. Your innate immunity is a lot more complex. And I want to talk about this because we've heard over the last several months, given the state of the world that we are in, we've heard a lot about our immune system and a lot about things like, you may have heard terms like cytokine storm and other related issues as it relates to the virus. Well, here's how it works. This is what happens in our innate immune system if bacteria gets into it. So first I'm gonna focus on bacteria and then next we'll talk about the virus, okay? <clears throat> the first thing that happens is we have these complement system proteins in the blood. I think that's a cool name. They're called complement system proteins and they are floating around in our blood looking for things like bacteria to get rid of it, to destroy it. So they're gonna do two things. They're gonna work to kill that invader. If they find an invader, they're gonna work to kill that in our bloodstream. Now, if at the same time they're working to kill the invader that they detected in our bloodstream, they're also acting as an alarm to the next level of protection. So they're doing two things at once, trying to kill, sending off an alarm to the next level. The next level that they're sending out the alarm to is called our macrophages. And macrophages are doing a couple of things also. They are working through a process called phagocytosis to eat the invader. So they're trying to chew up the invader and break it into small particles to destroy it. They are also, just like the complement system proteins, also acting as an alarm. Although this is where that cytokine principle comes in. The way that macrophages work to alarm the next level of immunity is via cytokines. So if we have this cytokine storm because so many macrophages 
are being activated to alarm the next system, it must mean that there's a fair amount of activity going on in our immune system that needs attention, okay? So what the macrophages are doing, how they're alarming the next um, level through the cytokine storm, they're alarming what's called neutrophils. And that's the third part of our innate immunity when it comes to bacteria. And neutrophils are cool because they are the most abundant white blood cell in our bloodstream. So they leave, they actually leave the bloodstream when they're called to action. So they get the alarm bell from the macrophages. They're called to action. They're gonna enter the tissues that's been infected. They're gonna eat the bacteria and to make sure it's totally gone, they're gonna release a toxic soup of chemicals to kill all of those invaders. And some of you may be seeing this foreshadowing already. When they do that, that also wreaks a fair amount of havoc on our guts, you guys. And again, our guts are the basic, most, most fundamental part of our immune system. The health of our gut indicates the health of our immune system. So to just pause on this slide for a second so I can tell you guys a short story that I learned from one of my colleagues. She had had her, and let me back up and explain a little bit about this gut issue. So our gut is designed to have a certain amount of permeability along its cell wall, which means this. Certain things are supposed to be able to come in, certain things are supposed to be able to go through the cell wall. It's supposed to have this nice flow. However, when our gut is compromised, you may have heard of the term leaky gut, what that means is that certain things that aren't supposed to get out of our gut do, and certain things that aren't supposed to get into our gut do, because the, cell, the permeability of that cell wall has been so compromised that it now, think of it rather than being, you know, the thickness of a towel all around, might be the thickness of a paper towel. That's very different. And all of a sudden things can go through it that aren't supposed to. So going back to this colleague of mine, she had had her blood drawn for some sort of routine examination. And when her doctor came in to talk to her about her lab draw, he said, have you been, do you know whether you've had any experience with something called leaky gut? And she didn't know much about it at the time because she hadn't yet been in school. This was one of the things that caused her to go back and learn about this. Um, he said, when we looked at your blood draw, there were food particles, undigested food particles that came out in your blood. Okay, you guys, that is leaky gut at its finest. If our undigested food particles that make it into it, the gut leak out and get into our bloodstream, that is terrible. Because what does that mean? Remember, our immune system is constantly patrolling our body saying, are you me and are you safe? And what do you think it's gonna answer in response to those two questions when it sees a random food particle floating around? No and no, and now it's going to rise the immune system to go to work fighting off this pathogen which is simply because we never chewed our food well enough before we ingested it in the first place. We could have waited all of that had we done that. So let me talk about innate immunity with respect to a virus because it is a little different. If the virus stays in our blood, it actually is the same process as the bacteria, okay? So we go through the complement system proteins, the macrophages with the phagocytosis and the neutrophils. That's all the same. But when your virus makes it past the blood to your cells, then this is what happens, which is different. The virus hides, this is how viruses can be so tr troublesome for our bodies. They hide in a cell and then they replicate over and over and over. You know how cells duplicate and they duplicate and they duplicate? That's what viruses are doing in your cells. While they are doing that, unfortunately, those complement system proteins, the macrophages, the neutrophils, they can't detect the virus at all because now the virus isn't in our blood and those things are patrolling the blood. So once it's in the cell and it replicates, it's getting way bigger. And then once it's fully replicated, it bursts back into the bloodstream and now you have a ton of infected cells, which is why all of a sudden when you get a virus, 
there is a there is a day where all of a sudden you are just whoa what just happened to me and knocked out that's when those all burst back into your bloodstream so what comes into the picture then is natural killer cells to the rescue so we have natural killer cells that are initiated once that virus has replicated those cells and is now back in our bloodstream so those natural killer cells are going to be activated. This is again where you hear that term cytokine storm. The macrophage derived cytokines are going to activate these natural killer cells to get to work to kill this virus. Natural killer cells are really smart. They have the ability, they have sniffers where they go around the body and they sniff out the good cells from the bad cells. The bad cells might be viruses, the bad cells might be cancerous, but the natural killer cells are able to sniff out and identify what those are. And then what they're doing after they've identified it is they're working to destroy those virus cells. They're going to cause the virus cells to commit suicide or they're going to attack them with an enzyme that kills them directly. But either way, they are destroying those virus cells. Okay, so that is really innate immunity in a nutshell. And before I move to adaptive immunity, I just wanna make sure you guys understand, we've got this process that happens with respect to bacteria, where it's the complement system proteins, then the macrophages, and then the neutrophils. And then in the virus scenario, it's that same system until the virus gets into the blood. And then we activate these natural killer cells, which are what need to go further in order to kill the virus. So to pause here for a moment before I sh share with you the third and final line of defense, I want you guys to just think about how many times in the last few minutes describing our innate immune system, I have used the word cells. This is all cellular, you guys. And our cells are comprised of the nutrients, both macro and micro, that we absorb through our digestive system. So I want the most healthy and most abundant natural killer cells I can find. I can, I can create rather. I want the healthiest and most abundant complement system proteins, macrophages, neutrophils. I need to do this by eating a nutrient dense variety of foods that is going to cause my cells to be very strong. Okay, and by the way, I should pause on that for a second because this is an important topic as I share at KetoCon. I practice low carb ketogenic living all the time. I do carb cycle. I do practice fasting, both intermittent and longer term. And when I say variety, that can mean in your day, in your week, in your month or seasonally. If you want to spend however long being carnivore and then vary your diet for a particular time during the seasons, fantastic. If you don't feel the need to do that and you just want to have the variety be in the healthy organic grass-fed meats and fish you're eating and eggs, awesome. But I guess my point is keep in mind that cellular health is in part a product of the diversity of the microbacteria, of the microbe that we have in our body, and that comes from the nutrient density and the variety in our foods. So just think about that. If you find yourself having some level of digestive distress or can't quite figure out um, how to hack a health issue that you're dealing with. Okay, let's talk about adaptive immunity because this is where it gets a little more scientific and I'll try to make this as simple as possible. Adaptive immunity has B cells, T cells, and, and something that's kind of like natural killer cells, they're killer T cells, and I'll talk about all three of those. So our adaptive immunity system, we have B cells that hang out in our lymph and spleen waiting for antigens to activate them. And what's an antigen? Well, what I really mean is pathogen, enemy. There's some enemy that's coming around, and this, is, this system only gets activated when our physical barriers and our innate immunity couldn't kill the bacteria or virus on their own. They were too weak. So now this is what has to come into play. Our B cells are hanging out and they're waiting to be activated. The second there's that undigested food particle, there's that virus cell, there's that um, bacteria that 
that finds the B cell or the B cell finds it, they activate and what they first begin to do is they start doubling again and again and again, okay? What's incredible about that, after just one week, you have about 20 billion B cells. These things can rapidly, rapidly multiply. In fact, they then pump out antibodies at a rate of 2,000 per second. So these amazing new B cells that our adaptive immune system just created pumps out these antibodies. It's just incredible how much they can accomplish. So these antibodies that they make after these B cells replicate and replicate and replicate and replicate and then pump out antibodies, you've probably heard of the term immunoglobulins. That's what they are. That's what the antibodies are. You've probably also seen these initials, things like IgM, which is an immunoglobulin that helps the innate system do its job better. So notice, we're talking about adaptive immunity right now, and I just said the antibodies that are made through our adaptive immune system help our innate immune system do its job better. It's cranking these out to strengthen the system that came before it. Other immunoglobulins that you may have heard of are IgA, IgG, IgE, and whether and which one of these your body chooses to create from these, from these B cells depends on where the invader is in your body and where the B cells are. So your body is extremely intelligent and it is constantly trying to figure out, okay, I've now made the IgM, what do I do next? Does my body need IgE, IgG, or IgA? And that depends on a variety of factors, but your body will figure that out. Most B cells, we have these amazing 20 billion B cells that were created. Most of them only last about one week and then they die, okay? There are some B cells that hang on that are called memory B cells, but for the most part, most of them die. But think about it, everything that I've shared with you right now, this is all designed to help the innate immune system do its job better so that those macrophages, neutrophils, and natural killer cells can get to work to kill the pathogen. So the other thing I mentioned is that adaptive immunity has T cells. Now, how is this different? This is pretty similar, although T cells, they're a little more selective and so we don't get as many of them. So I don't know if you remember on the last slide, but what I shared was B cells are waiting for an antigen to activate them. And again, that antigen may be a virus, a bacteria, or a foreign carbohydrate, lipid, or protein. T cells are different. They're a little more selective, and they're only going to pair with antigens or be activated by bacteria, parasites, viruses, or the foreign or irritating proteins. T cells don't come into play for whatever reason that's more sophisticated than we need to get into, or frankly, that I understand, is it's only proteins, okay? So not carbs and fats here. So once activated, just like the B cells, T cells are gonna double again and again and again, but we're not gonna get 20 billion of these guys. And frankly, since they're only dealing with proteins, bacteria, parasites, or virus, I suppose there's an argument to be made that we don't need as many because they're not dealing with fats and carbs too, but after one week, we only have about 10,000 of these as opposed to 20 billion. So it's much less. Now, those T cells, even though the B cells can immediately begin making antibodies after they're created, T cells have to get these helpers. I mean, T cells are just a lot more complex. It's like, okay guys, what else do you need? And the only one I'm really gonna focus on today is this one here, I'll show you, which is the T2 helpers. And the reason I'm gonna focus on T2 is because that is the T cell, the helper T cell that's connected to digestion. So after we have these 10,000 or so T cells that are made, the T cell is then going to find its helper, depending on what the issue is that you're dealing with in your body. And in the case of digestive distress, dysbiosis in the gut, the T2 helper cells are gonna be what's activated and what come into play, okay? Because we're talking about digestion. Those T2 helper cells, and I checked this 10 times when I created this PowerPoint, 
I wrote this right, they're going to actually now stimulate the B cells. They're going back to the B cells and they're stimulating those to produce these IgE and IgA antibodies, which are particularly helpful antibodies for our digestive tract. So they're getting to work and they're coordinating with this B cell system. Then we get killer T cells that come in and this is the analogous natural killer cells in your innate immune system. And these come in as the last resort finally when the infection gets in our cells and these are designed to reproduce and destroy. So they're going to reproduce and destroy the virus, the bacteria, the parasite, the pathogen, and they're there to make sure that you can be healthy. So to summarize, and I'm gonna to get to a slide that sort of summarizes a few things here. I hope that by now it is clear to you that the digestive and the immune systems work together for optimal health. We have a lot of control over how well our immune system functions by simply taking care of our digestive system. To, to summarize this connection, as I promised I'd do at the outset, ingested food should be broken down into the smallest molecule. I mean, you guys, I hate to say it, but our grandma was right when she said, chew your food well. It's true. It makes a huge difference in the health of our bodies. And let me just make sure it's, the connection here is clear. Keep in mind, if our immune system is dealing with a foreign invader, like a broken down food part, particle that hasn't been broken down enough, our immune system is busy dealing with that. It's getting tired. So then when the virus comes in, our body says, hey, I'm taking a nap. I'm just your immune system over here that's been working to get all of this crappy food that you keep eating out of me. So I'm actually not ready to deal with this virus yet. I'm gonna come back to you in a few days. So that's why it's so important, you guys, we want to have a healthy immune system to be able to fight off any foreign invader that we're not in control of. The least we can do for our bodies is to control the stuff we can control by optimizing our digestion. So again, here's an important point. Um, properly digested food can create dysbiosis, food sensitivities, allergies. We want a strong mucosal lining. Our immune system starts in our gut. We want lots of IgA, and IgA is going to be stimulated, created through those antibodies. We wanna have a lot of those always waiting for us. We want our bodies to have the ability to duplicate cells quickly and have them be healthy. So proper digestion plus nutrient dense food creates a strong immune system ready to deal with, attack and kill any invader. And if I haven't said it enough, a healthy microbiome is a key to a healthy immune system. So here's just quickly my top five takeaways that you can do now, because you may be saying, well, this is all great, but other than chewing my food, Kristen, what can I do? Okay, you can always eat in a parasympathetic state. That's probably my number one recommendation. And I say that you guys, because I, when I was experiencing all of that digestive distress, it was very interesting how much my body was forcing me to really relax a lot during that time. There honestly wasn't much I could do for those couple of weeks that I was dealing with that very severe digestive state. And so I was forced to slow down. When I did eat, I was forced to chew slowly to really be in a rest and digest state, not multitasking, not driving, not eating while you're walking around, really sitting down and even doing this before you eat. I often will do that like four times. I'll do a quick set of four box breathing before I eat, do a little prayer over my meal. There's a reason that prayer has existed around meal time for centuries in all cultures. And so you wanna eat in that parasympathetic state. Another thing is that, like I've said a lot, you wanna chew your food 25 to 30 times each bite. I also really recommend this, and this is because this is going to both detoxify you and stimulate your lymph system. I, every single morning, and have every one of my clients, we start our mornings with 25 ounces of water. So here's my hydro flask. I've got it with me at all times because it's stainless steel. I fill it with 25 ounces of really good source water. I have a Berkey water filter, the juice of one lemon, and a fourth a teaspoon of Redmond sea salt. And let me just pause and tell you why. Lemon stimulates our lymph. Lemon detoxifies our body. It's a great thing to keep our lymph stimulated 
Otherwise it's stagnant and remember those cells in our immune system are hanging out a lot of time in our lymph. So we wanna make sure we have the healthiest cells, that they're regenerating, that we don't have old, tired, bored, dead cells hanging in our lymph. So lemon and a fourth a teaspoon of Redmond sea salt, here's the reason for that. I love Redmond's, I found it's the best quality tasting salt and we, it has so many minerals. It's literally from mines in Utah, these caves, salt caves. So you're getting magnesium, potassium, sodium, you're getting all these EMs, which is our macro and micro minerals. And our, the science has shown our body can absorb minerals the best when it's in water. Yes, I put salt on my food too, but our body's really able to absorb those minerals better when it's in water. So start your morning with that. The next thing is avoid processed foods that irritate your digestion, okay? Guys, I love some of these more fun bars, these processed keto treats, all of that stuff is really fun and I do do that on occasion. And if there's some that I notice irritate me, or if I notice that I've had something that I wasn't sure of the ingredients and I'm irritated, I'll just avoid them for a few days until I can get my digestion back on track. You don't have to avoid certain things forever. You just have to pay attention to what's going on with your body by noticing your abdominal bloating and whether you're having any, noticing what's going on with your stool and paying attention to your body. And then five, and I say this because of my experience that I had, I had to bring out all of the big guns to solve that digestive stuff. So sometimes, especially if I'm gonna travel in a foreign country, I'm gonna supplement with HCL, which is hydrochloric acid, because that is stomach acid, essentially. And that is what really is designed to kill bacterias, bacteria and parasites when they enter our stomach before they ever get anywhere else. So HCL is a great thing, especially when you're traveling to consider taking, especially when you're eating foods that are prepared not by you, so you don't know exactly what's in them. So, and then I do every morning and night, I have many of my clients do this as well, to take a high quality free form amino acid L-glutamine. And there's two reasons for this. L-glutamine helps strengthen that mucosal lining of our gut. So we get that permeability intact like we should. It's really going to strengthen those cell walls. I also have some other products that I recommend because I had to bring out again big guns that I'm aware of. So if you're suffering from digestive distress or if you think you may need more support, I'm happy to talk to or answer any questions that anyone might have about this because I have been there and I understand. Okay, so if you want more information, I've got a free download for you. I would love to stay connected with everyone. You can text the word energetic to 4444 and you will get that free download sent directly to your email. It'll ask you for your email and then I will get you that free download that has a number of additional tips that I didn't share with you today about while strengthening your immune and digestive systems. And so um, if we were live, I'd of course be asking for questions right now, but let me just say this. I really mean it when I say I want to hear from you. I started this business a year ago. I was a lawyer for 17 years and I did this because I have an extreme passion on helping people heal their bodies through nutrition. I love it. I do it every day. I have a number of private clients. I'm teaching my first online course. There are more of those coming. So if you want to get involved in what I'm doing, if you want to follow what I'm doing, if you want to consider participating in my next course, I would love to have you. And so this is all the information. Feel free to take a photo of this slide, push pause, however you want to save this information, but I can be reached any of the ways that are identified on the slide. And I just want to say thank you to Robin and KetoCon for having me. I appreciate your time and attention today. And I hope that this information was helpful to you. Thanks so much.